About 150 years ago, a scientist named John Tyndall carried out a series of experiments and investigations that are still fundamental to science today. If some of these experiments related to magnetism, his greatest impact was on the field of what he described as radiant heat, which later became more widely known as infrared radiation. John Tyndall knew that the air was made up of lots of different gases, and wondered if these different gases would also have different properties in relation to radiant heat. So he created the apparatus enabling him to test the absorption of the infrared radiation from gases including oxygen and nitrogen, but more significantly, he also tested water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone, and methane. He showed in these experiments that some of these gases, especially the water vapor, absorbed the infrared radiation. Now prior to John Tyndall, there'd been a theory that somehow the atmosphere around the Earth acted like a greenhouse, keeping the earth warmer than it would otherwise be. However, until these experiments there yet to be any real evidence as to how this might actually happen. But we now know that when radiation from the sun reaches our earth, some of it is reflected back into space. A small part of it has been reflected back into space from the gases present in our atmosphere. A larger part is reflected into space by the water vapour which is formed in the clouds. Another tiny amount of radiation that reaches the ground again is reflected back into space. The majority of the radiation from the sun, though, making its way to the Earth, is absorbed. This radiation may be emitted later on, generally is infrared radiation, the rest of the energy being released through water evaporation and through rising warm air currents and other methods. The majority of the absorption of the sun's radiation is by the land and the oceans, the rest being absorbed by the atmosphere or the clouds. A large part of this energy being released is infrared radiation. Then the greenhouse effect and the absorption of the infrared radiation by the gases in our atmosphere become very important. The infrared radiation that's being released from the ocean, from land and other areas that absorb the earlier solar radiation finds its way into the atmosphere. How much of this then radiates away from our Earth and into space depends on the composition of our atmosphere and the rate at which that particular composition absorbs infrared radiation. Now whilst water vapour will absorb the most infrared radiation in our atmosphere, water vapour will also in the form of clouds plays a major part in preventing the solar radiation from reaching the ground in the first place. However, gases like carbon dioxide and the other greenhouse gases don't actually prevent solar radiation from reaching the surface of the earth. They do stop or reduce the amount of infrared radiation from being sent out into the space from the surface of the Earth. Instead, like solar like panels in a greenhouse, they reflect that energy back towards the planet, keeping the planet warmer than it would otherwise be. Then you increase the amount of these gases in the atmosphere around the Earth, much like the mentioned carbon dioxide, will in turn result causing the Earth to hold more of the sun's energy, again causing the average temperature of the Earth to rise, resulting in what's known as global warming. Conversely, if you decrease the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, more of the infrared radiation makes its way into space, and the Earth cools as a result. So it's thanks to John Tyndall, we now know that what gases actually contribute to global warming.